Alright, so this week what we're going to do is a uh, walk through a basic setup for setting up gopher snakes, bull snakes, and pine snakes. Um, they're all in the same genus, they're all related, so the care for them is actually going to be really, really similar. Um, so all of those snakes can be cared for very, very similarly. Um, any minor differences you'd be able to find by doing more research into the specific species you have. Um, but the only real differences are going to be what temperatures they brew made at and things like that. Um, around my neck here is actually a tiger reticulated python. He's not what's going in here. He's just an example of a neat little snake. I brought him in today from home, um, so he gets to be in the video this week. Um, so to start, you're going to have this cage. What I'm using here is the ZooMed starter kit for snakes. Um, it's a nice, good size to start, especially for uh, gopher snakes, bull snakes, and pine snakes. They're all very, very active snakes. So you can start off the little babies in a relatively large cage because they'll actually use all of that space. All right, so first things first. Um, I'm going to add some of the aspen bedding. I really, really like shredded aspen for most, most of the North American colubrid species. Um, it works really well as a substrate for pretty much the entire country. Um, it'll give them a, the size bag that comes with this kit is a nice, good sized bag. It actually gives you a really thick layer of bedding, which is perfect. Because um, these guys do like to burrow, they do like to go through the bedding. Um, and think of the bedding as just one gigantic extra hiding spot for your snake. When you have a thick layer of it like this, they'll go in and burrow throughout the entire bottom of your cage, um, which will make the snake really, really happy and feel secure. Um, the shredded aspen also um, holds feces and everything in a nice, easy way. It's easy to clean, easy to spot clean. Um, and on top of that, if you do need to add moisture, like your snakes are going to be shedding, um, the, <laughs> the aspen will actually hold moisture well enough to help them aid in shedding, but not get so damp and soggy that it's going to stay too wet and have them not do well. So the kit comes with obviously this much bedding. If you don't want to have that thick of a layer of bedding, you don't have to use the whole bag. Um, I just use the whole bag because again, these snakes are going to be burrowing through it and sleeping in it. So that's what I like to do. Um, the Zoomed kit also comes with a good sized water bowl. Go ahead and pop that right there. And then in addition to that, it comes with a little plant here. So. So we'll go ahead and put in the plant, and in addition to that, it comes with a medium-sized habitat. So we'll put that there, put in the plant, and honestly, that's it for as far as setting up the cage. When I go ahead and actually set this up for someone to take it home, um, I'm going to put this heat pad here on this side of the cage on the bottom. Uh, basically just to give it a warm spot. The, you want to keep your gopher snakes, bull snakes, and pine snakes all at about 85 to 90 degrees on the hot side. Uh, you can actually, if you're going to be using a heat light, which does also come with the kit, which is really nice. It comes with a little mini deep dome and a 100 watt dable. Uh, you can put this on the hot side and right now, because it's December uh, when we're making this video, it is pretty chilly out in a lot of, uh, pretty much most of the country right now. So you're going to want to probably add on that heat, like just to kind of help with the basking temperatures during the day. Uh, and then come summertime, you don't have to have that light on or you can uh, put a dimmer on it and turn it down. A rheostat works really well to turning down the light for summertime. Um, it really just depends on your area and just how hot or cold your house is. Um, but pretty much what you want is for about this part of the cage here, this much of the cage to be between 85 and 90 degrees. A little bit hotter is all right, as long as over on this side of the cage, it stays below 80. Um, ZooMed does include a really nice little analog thermometer with your kit here. So what you can do is just go ahead and pop this on. Um, and then just with anything else, if your heat pad is gonna be on the bottom of the cage and so is your snake, you're gonna wanna put your thermometer around where the animal's gonna be living. And then I always put it kind of low and I always put it on the side of the cage like that, just so that, that way when you look at the cage straight on, you actually don't see the, the thermometer t uh, too much. It's not gonna be all ugly and just this big, huge dial in your cage. Um, it just makes it look a little bit nicer if you're like me and you want your cage to be pretty. Um, and it's Velcro, so you can take it out and look at it. You can also put it on the cold side of the cage just to check the temperatures um, on the cool side, for especially during summer. And again, right now, because it's winter, it is pretty darn likely that it's not going to be too hot in the cage. But you're just going to want to make sure you monitor temperatures come summertime when everything's a lot warmer. 
Now, just because this cage is honestly kind of bare and basic, this is a good way to start off your cage setup, especially if you're just getting your snake for the first time. However, honestly, for a little baby snake in a cage this size, you're going to want something just a little bit more uh, decorated, a, a few more hiding spots for them to feel secure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab some of those hiding spots and kind of set them up in here so that that way when we do put the gopher snake in, uh, we're going to be setting up a little Sonoran gopher snake. When we do put the gopher snake in here, it will feel a lot more safe and secure. Um, and it will just basically feel a lot happier. And a happy snake is going to be one that feeds, eats, and does everything well for you. So let's go grab some stuff to put in here. So I went and put away my reticulated python and we actually took out the snake that's going to be going into that cage. Uh, you can see here, this is a little baby albino Sonoran gopher snake. They're really, really pretty little guys. Um, and we're going to take him out here with us just to kind of see what kind of size items we're going to use to put in the cage. Um, there's tons of options. We could add in a jungle vine like this, um, which would add kind of some vertical stuff for him to climb on. You could even do some of the bamboo bars. And again, they'll climb up and perch on them, but it's not a truly arboreal animal. Uh, it's going to be spending a lot of time down on the ground. And while you can put this kind of stuff in there, it's probably not going to utilize it that way. All right, or what you could do is add other kinds of things. You could do a really basic little hiding spot like this, which these little reptile basics hides are black and kind of, honestly, they're kind of boring to look at, but they work extremely well as a hiding spot. And as you can see, the smallest size that we carry here covers a little baby snake just, just fine. Uh, or for just a little bit longer, if you want it to be useful for. You could do one of these, which is also gonna hold them just well um, but I mean those are honestly really basic and really simple while they are practical they're not going to be very pretty in the cage uh, so you can do again you could do more haba huts if you wanted to you could do these little turtle hides uh, which will fit him perfectly <laughs> and if you put them flat on the ground you can actually see that there's not a whole lot of space under there and for these little baby snakes, what they want to do is go underneath a hiding spot and feel nice and safe and secure in a small, tiny, little, dark, little hiding spot. Because uh, that's going to make them feel the most secure. They're going to feel like they're covered and uh, contained on all sides, which makes them feel safe. You can also do like these fake rock outcrops, which are made by Exoterra. Um, and again, you can crawl in there. And there's a couple of little holes up here on the sides that they can climb out of. So you can also do stuff like these little refuge shelters here. Um, these will also fit him her quite perfectly. Um, so at this size, this would work really well. Um, there's also a couple different sizes. The only thing with these kinds of snakes is that you don't want to do something too big for a baby because the, it'll end up defeating the whole reason you have one of these nice caves. Um, if you put a little baby snake in a cave that size, it's not going to feel very safe and secure in there. He's going to feel like he's still exposed. Um, however, if you put them in a bit of a littler cave, they do feel a lot safer. Spider webs. Um, they do feel a lot safer. They do feel a lot better. So that's definitely just something to keep in mind. We've also got these Exoterra snake caves. We've got the primate skulls. These are a really neat little hiding spot you could put in there. Um, then we've also got all these fake caves, we've got these, we've got the crystal caves. I think what I'm going to put in there, I'm going to put in one of these, because these look cool. And I will do... I'm going to do one of these sticks just to give it something to climb on. Um, and again, just because they are such active snakes, if you put something like this in there, they'll climb all over it, climb around it, under it, on it. Um, and then we'll stack a few pieces of cork flaps just because again that whole reason that I like them is because when you put them flat on the ground it creates a nice snug little hiding spot for your snake to hide in. And then you can go ahead, we'll just stack a few of these in there, grab a couple different sizes. And you know what, just for giggles, I'm going to make this look a little bit more natural so I'll also grab some of the sphagnum moss to decorate the cage with. So we'll do some of that, maybe one more piece of wood, and there you go. So now we're going to go ahead and take all this stuff back and we're going to set it up and make the cage look nice. So go ahead and take this off here. Okay, so now we got to decide how we want this to go. Okay, so now we're going to set everything up. Uh, I'm going to do this cave here right up front and what you can do to kind of nestle it in and encourage your snakes to use it is to kind
kind of have a cave like this kind of halfway buried in the substrate. So that way the snake doesn't have to come out to use it. Keep the water bowl right here. And then what I'm going to do is set this up like that so it looks kind of like a tree branch. And we'll have this go like that. There we go. We've got a little mini fake tree here. So that looks nice. We'll do this is a medium piece of sandblasted grape wood. Uh, and we'll have that like that. And then this is the small size and it's kind of an arbitrary, it's basically based on length. Um, so we'll have a couple of these things here for them to climb on. And in addition, edit that out because I'm making a weird face. And then we'll also do a little bit of these. Now the reason I like cork, and again, because these guys are from North America, so they're actually from um, our neck of the woods in a lot of cases. So they, they want to hide in things that are going to be similar to what you find in your yard. So go outside, go for a hike. If you ever see these out in the wild, you'll have an idea of what their habitat's like. And it's going to be a lot like this, where there's just kind of, there's wood piled on the ground, there's going to be leaf litter everywhere. So you stack a couple, a little bit of cork, you've got your wood branches here, from the climb on. This just kind of looks nice. It, it makes it better for your snakes to have a kind of a more enriched environment to live in. And again, the gopher snakes, uh, bull snakes and pine snakes are all super, super active and they're really, really smart kind of snakes. So when you give them a nice, well set up cage, it's going to give them a lot of areas to climb on, climb around in and explore. They're really going to take advantage of it. They're going to be out and about. They're going to be using all of this space. So it's really, really good for them and it helps you to raise a nice, healthy, good sized snake. Cool. And so the last touch is just going to be, again, because I wanted to make it look a little bit nicer, a little bit more um, like a display tank, because I'm going to put just a little bit of this sphagnum moss in here. And that's just, again, just to kind of mimic the kind of woodsy appearance that we have or out in the wild here in North America. Uh, it's not going to be a perfect kind of naturalistic recreation because how many places in the wild have shredded aspen as the ground substrate. But adding in a little bit of moss here kind of just makes it look a little bit more just like where they would be in the wild. Um, and then if you want to increase humidity when these guys are shedding, all you got to do is just get the moss wet and the moss will dry out and look all nice. Um, and then basically the, the damp moss, um, while it is damp, will help with humidity for while your snakes are shedding. And then when it dries out, it'll go back to looking all nice and natural like it does here. And there we go. So there's our nice little kind of naturalistically set up uh, snake terrarium. We've got the tank here. We've got a couple, a ton of different hiding spots. So this little baby snake is going to have a ton of options to choose from. Uh, and it's just going to basically be a happy little camper. And then if you have, if you're ever concerned about your water quality or anything like that, you can always add a couple drops of rep to save to the water. Uh, Zoomed includes this with the kit. Uh, it's basically just going to kind of make sure that there's nothing harmful in the water. It's a lot like treating the water for fish. Uh, you don't necessarily have to do it for snakes, but it's really, really great for frogs, for turtles, for anything that's a lot more aquatic. Um, and again, if you are ever concerned about the water quality, if you want to be better safe than sorry, definitely just use the water treatment and then you don't have to worry about it at all. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to set up my little buddy here, <laughs> who is very happily taking a nap in my pocket. Um, so there we go. Ooh, look at all those places you can go hide. So as soon as they get in there, as you can see, they're really active. Uh, this is a little albino Sonoran gopher snake. So the pattern is going to be a little bit different than um, even just a San Diego gopher snake or um, the Applegate albino gopher snakes. These guys are all going to look a little bit different. Um, they do have that really nice cool head. Um, and then one last thing about gopher snakes, bull snakes, and pine snakes is that they are all actually species that brumate or sleep during the winter. Uh, once they get to be a little bit bigger, uh, the way that you're going to want to do that is you kind of start to cool down their, their cage um, around, depending on your area. Uh, I usually do it at home for mine starting around October, November. I'll start cooling down their cages and uh, once I start cooling their cages, I stop feeding them. 
about two weeks after I stop feeding them, I then completely turn off all of their heat. Uh, and at that point, uh, if you're in an area where your house is getting to be about 55 to 60 degrees, you can just leave them at that temperature. However, if your house is any warmer than that, like mine is being here in Southern California, you're going to want to give them an even cooler area to go hide in. Um, or not necessarily to go hide them, that you're going to want to keep them for the winter. A lot of people will actually use just a cooler down in their basement. Um, they'll keep them maybe in the garage if your garage stays at a, at a consistent temperature. Basically your goal is to have them stay between 50 and 60 degrees for at least four to five weeks. Um, some people brewmate them for longer, two to three months. Some people only do that very bare minimum of just a month. Um, or if you're just keeping a pet snake and you don't want to br brewmate them because you're not intending to breed them, you can do that too. The snake might stop eating for a few weeks or even a month or two during the winter, but that's going to be just fine as long as your little snake is choosing not to eat on its own. And then lastly is going to be feeding. Uh, this little guy here is eating a small fuzzy every Wednesday. Uh, most of the snakes here in the stores, we feed them all on the same day, which is going to be Wednesdays here. Um, as they get bigger, you're going to want to keep feeding them something that's about as big around as they are. Uh, I keep uh, hypo stillwater bull snakes at home, and mine are actually big enough to eat small to medium-sized rats. Um, and those are basically, those are a feeder item that's as big around as they are, because um, they're good-sized snakes. Uh, which is why I like this particular group of snakes so much, is that they do get quite large for a North American species. Um, and they're honestly fairly easy to care for. This kind of care and setup is almost identical to a corn snake. However, it does get a little bit bigger. It gets a little bit meatier of a snake. It's a bit thicker. Um, and they're just super cool. They're really smart. You can really see that the snakes actually look at you. They, they want to see what's going on. Um, and they do get quite friendly. That little snake there you saw, he was just hanging out in my pocket uh, for most of this setup here. Um, obviously not while I had the retake out. Well, the retake was out, I had him put away. Um, but while we're out there on the floor, he just hung out happily in my pocket. Um, so there you go. This is a really great gopher snake setup based off of the ZooMed starter snake kit. Um, basically, you can take that snake kit and adapt it to just about any kind of colubrid or North American snake species. Um, this particular kit here was, again, super easy to make, really easy suitable for any kind of gopher snake, bull snake, or pine snake to start out in. All of those snakes get between four and six feet long though, so while this is good to start them out in, it's going to be too small for an adult. Um, for any other information, make sure you visit the website at www.llreptile.com where we have all of the products you see in this cage here listed. And that's it. There you go. That is how you set up a gopher snake. Uh, we'll see you back here next week for next week's video.